Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy of Zero Phase. This is Eric. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use a character template sheet that will allow you to get different facial angles. Um, and even expressions and stuff like that, all while maintaining the same character consistency. As you can see in this, I just used a bear with this sheet and uh, was able to get lots of different angles with the bear looking down and kind of looking up and looking all over the place. So we can do this with animals, we can do it with people, and uh, this tutorial will show you how to do this so you can create consistent characters, whether it's for storybooks or other illustrations, or just getting the face you want and then using that to create other faces. So let's move into this. What we're gonna do, I'm using Reality's Edge right now. It seems to work pretty good for what I'm doing, uh, but honestly, this will work with pretty much any uh, checkpoint, okay? So the prompt I have set up, I am currently using uh, is Photo Grid. And then in this one here, I used Anime Girl because what I'm describing is a picture that um, I'm taking the character and I'll show you here real quick. So this image that I generated quite a while ago actually, and um, converting that over to a more realistic photo version of the person with the hair, you get the kind of wisps of hair, and uh, yeah, I mean, even the eyes. Let's pull this up so you can kind of see. So you can kind of see the how the character was carried over and made more realistic. It's a very cool feature, um, something that I know a lot of people are looking for to be able to do storybook illustrations. It seems to be pretty popular. Uh, or in other things, I don't know, uh, videos and whatnot. Okay, so I showed you the checkpoint. The uh, prompt is pretty simple. You can either say character design sheet. I, I, I like photo grid. Um, if you use character design sheet, it tends to create like these drawn characters, which is fine. Maybe we'll go into that. Describe who it is or what it is you want to see in there. Um, because you're describing a grid, it should maintain this. I'll show you the other settings that help maintain this as well with a white background, emphasized. So you can grab that prompt if you want. It seems to work pretty good. I'm using Automatic 1111 Forge. So there's a few things that might be a little different uh, with the samplers. I'm using the turbo editions of the samplers that are pretty common. Uh, so Euler A, DPM++ 2M, and uh, DPM++ 2M SDE. Each one is a turbo. They're designed for lightning models and turbo models. And for right now, we're just using the DPM++2 MSDE Turbo. Works pretty good. We got our sampling step set to eight. So depending on which model you want to use, you're gonna need to read up on what the sampling steps are gonna be. If it's just a regular SDXL model or even a 1.5 model, uh, you're gonna wanna have this up to above 20 probably. And then the config scale for this particular model works really well at config scale two. Uh, there's a couple of lightning models that work really well at 1 or 1 1.5, but 2 seems to work really well for this one. The character sheet I'm using has a bit of an odd aspect ratio. I'll come down here and show you. It's this right here. It's actually like a 1024 by 614 pixels. And um, I, so basically you had to figure that out, program in the pixels here and then I lock it using aspect ratio extension aspect ratio helper extension and then I can drag it up and I like to have it a little higher on the resolution so 1200 by 720 that gives me a little bit more pixels to work with and makes for a higher quality image and allows the faces to come out a little bit better okay these you don't have to worry about if you want to do multiple batches you can a detailer I do turn on when working with uh, human faces, whether they be coming from anime or going from human to anime. Um, don't mess with any of the other settings in that, just turn it on. Down here, we're enabling the first control net. If you only see one control net in your automatic 1111 interface and you're not using Forge, you'll need to go into your settings, go under the, con the uh, control net settings, and increase the number of control net um, windows should be a setting in there. I typically like having it at three. So what we're doing is we're just dropping this character grid in here and I'll make this available on my Google Share. You can go there and grab it. 
and uh, it seems to work pretty well and I'm using it with Canny. So we're enabling it, we're doing, I'm allowing a preview, not that that's necessary, but doing pixel perfect. So you can at least see that it's recognizing all the uh, different aspects of the images pretty well. Uh, you know, I do notice that it's cutting off the hair in some of these uh, and so it's not doing a ponytail and a lot of that is kind of gauged by how much control weight you're giving it. So Canny, leaving these defaults, I'm setting the control weight down to 0.45 for what we're doing here. Now, uh, I've gone as low as like 0.3. The problem you run into with that is it doesn't, the coherence of the grid starts to fall apart. Meaning uh, some grid squares will be bigger than the others. It like focuses on the center too much. I find that right around 0.4 to 0.45 hold, maintains that integrity. And then on the ending control step, I'm dropping that down to 55% or 0.55 of the way through the generation. So about halfway through, I'm giving the AI full freedom to incorporate whatever details it wants. So it works really well maintaining the consistency, but adding that finer detail in like around the hair and facial features. Now the other thing I'm doing here is I'm enabling a second control net, bringing in the picture of the character or person that I want to uh, transfer, I guess you could say, the face to the character sheet. And in this case, it was an anime girl that I had generated. And as you can see, it transferred it really well. Now you do want to make sure that in your description, you're, you're describing the character that you want to have. So in this case, I did describe uh, anime girl, red hair, black shirt. I, you know, I specified black shirt because I wanted something a little different, and blue eyes. Those were the main characteristic features that I wanted to maintain. And then the IP adapter. So uh, we bring this image, and then we're selecting IP adapter and pixel perfect. But the IP adapter is going to take the rest of it, you know, kind of the general shape of the face and characteristics that way, and bringing them over, even the like some of the hair. You can see that uh, it brought over um, that wisp of hair in a lot of these images. Not completely, but you know, that's okay. All the other settings, I, I turned the control weight up, up at one point. I don't think that's entirely necessary. I did have great success at one. I didn't see much of a difference going to 1.3 or, or above one, honestly. Now, here is the big difference in playing around with this. There's three different preprocessor models. And what I found is that the, oh, that's interesting, I thought it was the second one, but the Insight Face Clip 4, which is the default one that it goes to, seems to work the best at maintaining the character consistency without too much randomness. So we're going to actually bring in a different image here and see what, what we can do with it. So let's uh, grab this other image. Where'd it go? Give me one second. Okay, let's grab this one, bring it in. Okay. Um, so we got characteristics. I mean, this is pretty generic. Uh, you know, this is another generation I did. We got black, long black wavy hair and beautiful woman with dark complexion. We'll just say that. So we're going to go here. We're going to grab that. We're going to say beautiful woman, long black wavy hair dark complexion maybe maybe not dark complexion we're gonna go tan see if that works leave everything else the same we've already gone through all the settings we don't have to modify anything else and let's just hit generate and see what it does I'll let you watch it through this first generation here so you can kind of see if it maintains the consistency of the grid. That's all brought in through the grid on here and it translates over into the uh, canny preview, which is nice. Looking good so far. Okay, high res fix just kicked in. A detailer should kick in, find all the faces. Okay, 
There it goes. Yeah, it actually looks a lot like the character in the picture. And it looks like it maintained the angles of the faces pretty well. Sometimes, depending on where you have the control net weight at down here, if you go too low, you lose consistency on that, and the character will be kind of looking off in random directions and uh, doesn't work well. All right. Let's blow this up. And we have a very consistent character that looks a lot like the original. Let's bring that over here so you can kind of see it. So we have same eyes, eyebrows look the same, same cheeks, nose looks the same. So let's kind of go over this. The ang different angles look good. Side profile looks great. Like it is amazing how well this does this. Now you can take these and run them through the background removal and create a transparent PNG and place these characters in anything you want. Now, this doesn't just work for human figures. We can be doing this for a lot of different things. And it all depends on what you're putting in your description. So let's try one other thing. Let's try something a little different. We're going to do photo grid. Let's do character grid and we're going to do um, I don't know let's this will be a little bit of a, a trial run here I want to see what it does we're gonna do um, purple alien woman with I don't know tentacle tentacle hair I'm just going to leave it at that and give it a try. We're just experimenting right now. And I'm going to show you how to do things like the bear and other stuff here. Because um, those are pretty, pretty easy too. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right. So now we've got a purple alien, I guess. <laughs> uh Oh, it is woman, so it did, I did specify woman, so it is a woman, but she's purple. She's got tentacle hair, which I th I think is awesome. Look at this. But what's cool about this is that the character oops, maintains the same structure. So it carried over characteristics from the image that I, I put in the IP adapter and brought that over. So you can have a lot of fun with this, creating all sorts of unique characters, but having consistent character um, positioning, facial features, we could even specify smiling. Uh, we can say angry. And let's say um, biomechanical. Okay, so it's not changing the girl a whole lot. We're still getting the same consistent female face. And then, and then the reason is because we're using that second IP adapter. If we wanted something completely different, we'd shut that one off. But this is crazy. So you get almost something that looks like something from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, you could have a lot of fun with that too. Change the hair color, whatever. Okay, so in fact, let's do that. What we're going to do now is we're going to come down here and shut off this second IP adapter. We don't need. I'm just showing using that to show you that you can carry a face, whatever face you want to put in there, across illustrations, photography, cartoons, whatever. You can just put that in there, adjust the settings. Whatever character comes up here is going to have a similar face, if not the exact same face. Uh, you know, obviously, it depends on your description up here. So now that we've disabled that. We're going to leave this description the same. We're going to see what we get now with out the, oh, you know, let's just get rid of woman too. Let's run that. This should be interesting. Now we definitely got something that looks a lot different. Specify alien, you're still going to get something that's fairly humanoid, but these look great.
The only one it didn't do the A detailer on was this last one. It didn't quite recognize that as a face. But the other ones it worked phenomenal on. I wanted to look at that. <laughs> now we could get into animals um, if you want. It was come in here. We can leave angry in there. That's kind of fun. Let's just say eagle head. Just something simple. See what it does. Yeah, I can already tell it's not going to do it quite right. So we're going to interrupt that. I think what we're going to need to do now is I have it up at 0.45. In order to give this the freedom it needs, we need to come down to, and before I think I went down to 0.35, I think helped me maintain some of that. Let's try that. Let's, in fact, we're going to shut off high res fix. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to quickly go through these see what setting it was. I, I'm pretty sure it was 0.35. It may need to go a little bit lower, but I don't want the grid. It's still doing, this is interesting. Okay, sorry, I just had to do a little bit of experimenting. The reason why it was still giving me characters is because I had up here character grid. So once I switch this over to photo grid, then we started getting a much different result. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn on high res fix. And we're going to get rid of angry because, honestly, an angry eagle kind of looks a little funny. It did maintain the character grid pretty solidly, so we're going to go ahead and drop that down just to 0.3. Oops. This should be a little more consistent and give us what we're looking for, I think. There we go. Yep, perfect. That last one there is not right, but you know, we could fix that later or just re-render it, honestly. There's the high res fix so that it fills in all the extra details. I think a detailer, we shut a detailer off. Yeah, good. Okay, and there you go eagle heads in different directions. Not exactly looking up and down. Working with animal faces is a little different. Got two commas in there. Let's do this. Let's do chipmunk head. Again, we're just going to quickly go through some of these. <laughs> that one worked out beautiful. Down, kind of up, and a little bit more up. This one's here, you know, are kind of about the same level as these ones here, but these are looking down. Worked out nice. Now let's do something a little more uh, illustration grid. Chipmunk head. Let's do cartoon chipmunk head. This model does pretty good. Reality's Edge is pretty nice. And there you go. You got yourself a kind of a cartoon chipmunk. Let's do a cartoon fairy head. Kind of looking up on these ones. I'd use the fa the A detailer on this to fix the faces, but there you go. Now, again, you can use the second control net if you have a face in particular you'd like to apply to these, and uh, you would apply it. Let's see. Is there anything else that would be good to show you on this? I think that was pretty much it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of experimenting you're going to do with this. I hope this really helps. Uh, I did have quite a few people ask me about consistent characters. I had a lot of people asking me about doing a video with a character sheet so you could do, uh, so they could understand better how do you uh, create a consistent character style and getting those different facial positions. Um, works out really well. Let's do one more. Dark Wizard.
Oh, it's interesting. It's kind of doing it in um, almost like drawn. I would actually bring up the, so bring this back up to like point Let's try point four five. I said dark wizard, so it might just assume I'm black and white, honestly. Yeah, you get up above point four, and what you end up what ends up happening is it's adhering to the shape here. So I'm gonna show you one more thing. Uh, we're gonna use open pose. So this character sheet does the reason I use this character sheet is it works really well with open pose. Um, I've got a couple other character sheets that are just drawings. They're all, they're like uh, learn to draw drawings. So it's got the character looking in different directions, but it's just like the outline of a head with a cross across the face. So it, Open Pose has a hard time figuring that out. With this one though, because they're actual faces, it's able to pick up all the faces. And by using Open Pose, it's not restricting you to the outline of a human face. So though the um, canny works really well, this actually works really well when uh, working at, I think, like lower numbers or, yeah, no, we're going to have to increase the number. Sorry. You can actually work at higher control weight numbers with this um, just because there's no pre, I don't know what you call it, pre determined uh, face Let's see in just a second here I think you do lose a little bit of consistency with you know, I'm not really specifying clothes do get a fairly similar character across the board let's just do this wearing hooded red hooded cloak Let's see what that brings across here so it's fairly similar looks good what I would do though with this I think you can get much better consistency if you do bring in a character face so let's do this let's bring over this guy here this was an image generated by somebody on my discord i don't remember who I was trying to outpaint the rest of the body um, i think we got him taken care of too so we're going to enable that pixel perfect just leave it as is we're going to say um, we're going to leave it as hooded cloak let's just see how that carries across here yeah not quite what i was thinking one of the reasons uh, I like to use canny is because when you're using the um, open pose, you're losing the grid as opposed to if you have canny selected, it actually maintains that grid like that. So if we bring this character over here, even just for consistency's sake, it might be good just to have something here. Um, I think even if it's just a colored picture of nothing, I get the idea, the, the feeling that that would actually work really well. I'm going to bring this down to 0 0.3, 0 0.45, not 0.4, come on. Let's do 0.35. I think that should maintain the grid. It should maintain the character positioning while still carrying over that character face. Possibly. Did I select something wrong here? Enable. Pixel perfect. IP adapter. Insight face. Yeah. Control weight is one. That's fine. Yeah, it could be that I'm just not describing the character very well. Let's do this. Dark Elf Wizard.
And you can see this is giving you a lot to work with. To be able to do a lot of really cool things. I said dark, so it's doing darker skin. We got the elf. I don't know if it's carrying the character face over as well as I'd like it to. And maybe that's because I'm uh, not using a detailer, but a detailer doesn't utilize this. Let's see here. Wait a minute. Yeah, there we go. So. Point three, maybe. Let's bring this up. I mean, at this point, you get the idea. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I'm just kind of experimenting here to see what I can get out of it. Let's do photo grid. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have clicked something wrong somewhere, but if you go back to the beginning of the video, you definitely get a better uh, view of what's going on here. I want to try this one right here, the clip VIT Big G. Yeah, no, that definitely didn't work. And that's probably because of this. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so um, the, where is it here? So it's the second one here, this Clip VIT Big G. The other one worked for some of the other faces, but I think this one, uh, definitely works for these and you can tell it brought over that face quite a bit quite a bit quite well you can tell my voice is getting a little rough I've been sick the last week and a half and today's like the first day I've had any kind of a normal voice we're gonna turn on high res fix and a detailer on this one I want to see this thing full res and we'll call it good Maybe we'll use this one as the title picture Okay, so you can see it's just kind of finishing up here. Kind of wanted you to see that it's creating that consistent character face in a very similar fashion to the original picture. And there you go. Cool stuff. It's interesting, the, uh, the A detailer sometimes will end up like missing part of the face like as it re-renders the face so the a detailer you are losing it's not utilizing this face though there is supposedly ways to go into a detailer because it has the ability to set up a control net here but the only one that um would work with it is these t2i adapters i'm not sure how to use those necessarily so I'll have to experiment with that and see. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it wasn't too long for you. If you're watching, great. Um, just for those of you who are using my online prompt forge, we are implementing some updates here uh, that will create a better user experience. Um, just so I can show you here real quick. Bring it up. So I've condensed it down, moved some of the tools and everything into a control panel this draggable we're going to be adding some more tools to this but you have your standard you know, picking the gener prompt generator from the list of generators there selecting your number of prompts um, doing a picture analysis some some of the features of my core prompt generator and then you know modify modification requests now some of the things we're going to be changing in this is adding the ability to list your lauras a lot of people like using lauras i have honestly i never use them um, but I did get a request the other day um, that got me thinking about redoing the interface to make it look nicer and have it a lot more functional. So you now have two buttons for a control panel and then the artist options and references. So you can come in here and you can leave these open. If you close them, they maintain their settings. 
but just as kind of a sneak peek here, let's see if I can show this. So this is um, kind of a rough inlay of the functional components. So as you can see, it looks like the other one, except down here you have the ability to add LORAs. So you'd name your LORA, you know, kind of maybe like a description of what it is. Um, and then you'd actually put in the LoRa itself, you know, whatever that is. You know, sometimes they, I guess they look like this most of the time. And what that does, it puts it in a drop-down box that you can select it. And you have the ability of adding multiple LoRa's to it. So it refreshes it, so you can come in here and select these. And the whole point is that when you hit generate on your prompt, it will add these to the end of whatever prompts it generates. So if we say two prompts, and we're not going to put anything in there, we're just going to have it generate some random prompts, it would put it at the end of the prompt here, so triggering your LoRa's when you go to render them in automatic 11.11, or I, I'm assuming, I don't know if Comfy UI has that, but it's not quite there yet. I should have this finished hopefully in the next few days. Uh, this is going to be an amazing function that will save people a ton of time. That's my whole goal with, with creating this, this, what I call my prompt forge, is the ability to save people time, to help them find inspiration. And I found that there are a lot of people out there that use LoRa's. And in fact, this guy, he was adding something like four LoRa's to the end, of, four or five LoRa's to the end of each of his prompts. And he was saying, is there a way we can get this put in? Because honestly, I hate, you know, having to go find each one and select each one when you can have all of them listed here and you just pick each one you want and they stay there and then it just automatically adds it to the end of each of your prompts. You will have the ability to save and load so when you save this, it'll save it as a CSV file. And then if you refresh the page, it obviously doesn't hold those settings. It doesn't save those settings. So you'd have to come back in here and just click this or you just drag and drop the CSV file onto this field right here. It'll load it in and you have all your prompts. Um, just as a quick example here, let me grab some that I had. So let's drag this over here. We'll drop it right there. Refresh the list and there's all the tests I put in there. And yes, you can select as many as you want in this, adding Laura's to your heart's content. Okay. And again, just as if they're in here, they will be added. I didn't feel like there was any reason to enable or disable. Um, maybe we'll put a clear button so you're not having to click off each one of these to clear them. But that's what I'm saying. Is this is kind of in the rough stages, trying to figure out what the layout looks like and what buttons to get in there that makes it functional. So I'm looking forward to this, uh, and I think this is going to greatly improve. For those of you who aren't aware or aren't familiar with this, this is uh, my online prompt generator um, that gives you the ability to generate prompts for a variety of image generation platforms um, and giving you a vastly powerful control over those prompts. Um, so let's put in something in here, troll with sword that's all we're going to give it hit submit it's going to generate two prompts here when that submit button comes back we have our prompts so we got a white angle oil painting it just it it just kind of picks the medium uh, unless you specify so if i come up here and put uh let's say water color painting submit and it'll come back with, oh, put medium in there. It does that once in a while. Medium watercolor painting. So it's like the shot. Um, and then adds a kind of menacing troll wielding a sword. So kind of expanded on that a little bit. Dynamic composition, sharp blade, intense eyes, fierce expression, impending attack, lush forest background. Yeah, so I've, I've got this thing trained to intuitively based on what you put in there, it will expand on and incorporate things. You can put as much as you want up here and it'll incorporate those features. The artists and options panel gives you access to a variety of artist samples and names and a color picker. And this is something that uh, I find to be incredibly powerful if you want to actually control the theming of the 
of the image, you know, the color theme. You can come in here and select the color, and it will intuitively grab the color name. It, it, it uses AI to interpret a hex code on the back end. It's really cool the way I got this figured out. And then you, you, any color you give it, select and you know, sky blue. We'll come over here to a deep, deep blue, like navy blue. And the, then the prompts, when you generate these, will incorporate those colors into various aspects of the prompt. It's not really, you're not really controlling it necessarily. So you come in here and we got uh, Raging Expression, Deep Maroon Skin, Sky Blue Eyes, Navy Blue Sword, and we could add more colors in there and you render that and you get some great images. And then we got a ton of drop down menus with all sorts of different um, words for different uh, features, visual features that if you're looking for inspiration, this is where you want to find it at. So, um, you select a name, it'll drop a name in there and enable this over here and you'll try to incorporate that particular artist's name into the prompt. You know, watercolor techniques of AJ Kaysen. So most of these are, there's about 1200 artists here. These are all artists that have been to some degree or another trained in the stable diffusion models. And um, it's great to have that there. You can scroll through that and see great examples of of what they are, you know, two different human samples, a, a, a structural sample, and a kind of a natural nature sample. Fun to look at, fun to see the different artist styles. I find this much better than the inspiration extension in Automatic 11.11. Uh, it seems to be more consistent, easier to use. You don't have to worry about generating the images yourself. I've already done that. And uh, you can actually do a search too. Geeker. Does real time search. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, if you hung on this long, I hope you uh, see something of value. Uh, we do offer a free version out on the website. Uh, if you go to shop.zerophase.com, go under Zero Gen, go to Zero Gen Lite, and you have a free version you can work with. This one, um, you can do you can generate one prompt every 30 seconds. It just uh, has you wait for 30 seconds. Uh, so most people aren't going to need more than that. Uh, this may change. It really depends on how. I get a lot of people now using it. And I know OpenAI uh, on their API has some kind of limitations on like the prompts or what is it? Tokens per minute. Ran into that the other day. <laughs> and uh, so far I haven't run into it again. But as more and more people use this, uh, the, the number of, of tokens being utilized will go up. Uh, this... My prompt generator with the request typically takes up about 3,200 tokens for each request. So uh, it's a pretty extensive uh, set of instructions to get the results we're looking for. Anyway, and if you're interested in working with a full Platinum Edition, uh, we actually have three different levels. Uh, we have the uh, um, Silver, Gold, and Platinum. And uh, they... Oops, let's go over here and just show you real quick. And, you know, this kind of gives you a rundown of uh, what they do. Each one, ha what you, the features each one. I need to update the picture on this one since we're changing the interface pretty con considerably. And there's a video, uh, kind of a video tutorial walkthrough, so you can kind of see the functionality a little bit more in depth. Okay, like the video, subscribe. Um, I should have said that earlier on the video, but uh, we'll talk to you later.